Hello and welcome back to Imperium Galactic Survival version 1.10. Uh, my name is Banj. Welcome back to the absolute insanity that is this holiday. It is just simply fantastic, perfectly balanced, completely and utterly bug free. <laughs> I um I just started recording here. I didn't actually intend to start recording, but I just started recording here because I've been able to get the hover bike almost into orbit. I'm not even joking. I I glitched off the top of this mountain and unfortunately i wasn't quick enough to load up obs and start recording when it happened but uh you caught the sort of tail end of me falling back to the planet there um yeah I, I got to the top of this mountain and the bike just sort of glitched out and then catapulted itself so far up into the sky i almost broke orbit um so i was gonna see if i could just do it again for you guys real quick it was it was somewhat amusing uh anyway to welcome you back thank you very much for joining me on this uh, tutorial series of Imperial Galactic Survival, tutorialing and explaining how to break the hover bike. And yeah, no, it's uh, it's not going to work this time, unfortunately. But I basically I got so much air off the top of this mountain. I think I just clipped the ground slightly, and then it just decided to go absolutely bananas. And launch itself in the sky. It's not going to do it again. Unfortunately, it's like one of the one in a million things, I think. But um, you know what? Just dicking around with this hover bike and crashing it into things is is hilarious. It's really fun. See how it reacts. <laughs> it goes absolutely ballistic sometimes. It's all good fun. Anyway, I am um, on the hunt for Hishkal ice golems. Well, I am in the mountains mostly. Um, they are an elusive bunch, I gotta say. They do not like to come out, but um, I have four specimens of the five that I need for the next uh, part of the mission. But um, that wasn't going to be the focus of the of the today's video, really. Today, I want to get the nightshade in. Now, at the end of the last episode, I kind of showed you um, basically how to unlock things in the blueprints library so you can spawn stuff in. This is new to 1.10, where you can, uh, you have to uh, unlock things in in your tech tree in order to unlock them in your factory and be able to build them. So, really important to cover that. Uh, there's a hitch count. There we go. We'll get him. Come to me. I'm down here. Come, come on. Hopefully, this will be number five. They have been a very, very rare drop. I'd say I'd probably killed about 30 of these damn things trying to get those um, those specimens. I really, really, really wish I didn't sell them. So if you haven't started out on Ningues yet, don't sell the specimens. Uh, annoyingly, you need them. So yeah, um, I can't buy them back because when the trader resets, their stock amounts resets to zero. So yeah, there we go. Uh, never mind. We will hopefully... This will be the last one. Hey, bingo, five of five. Wonderful stuff. Okay, so we'll go back and do that. But like I said, I want to do, do want to concentrate on getting the nightshade in today so that we can actually get airborne. Um, we have it added to the factory. We unlocked everything. We just need 446 carbon substrate, 318 copper, 243 silicon, 228 iron, some cobalt, a lot more cobalt than we actually have, 10 neo and four titanium rods. So we need to go mining a little bit today. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll do that. I've got some carbon ore just over here, actually. Let's go and pick that up. And of course, once we get the ship in, we'll need to be able to fuel it, arm it. Um, and that's not just sort of, um, basic fuel for the tank. We'll need pentaxid fuel for the warp drive, uh, as well. And if we want to add a shield generator to it, then we need to do that as well. But, uh, this laser drill, <laughs> this laser drill has seriously sped up mining to the point where uh, my initial plan, or thought, I was going to get a hover miner in to do this digging for me and speed it up slightly, is completely and utterly redundant because this does it this does it fast enough. Get spending the resources on a hover miner in the vanilla game, pointless in my opinion. Um, other people may disagree. That's fine. Everyone is, uh, you know, everyone's play style is valid for them. So if you like to get a hover miner in as your first vessel and, and dig up these things, you know, with that instead of the hand drill, that's absolutely fine. But I think this is quick enough to uh, to, to disqualify the hover miner as a, as a as a possibility, really. And how much have we got there? 
So we've got a thousand, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click on that stack there to grab half of it, instantly splits it in half, just right click and just slot it right into the factory there. And you'll notice the carbon substrate now reads green 502 out of the 446 left. So it will, it will spend what it needs and it will leave the rest in my factory for the next thing. So don't, don't be afraid if you've got the spare resources to overfill the factory. In fact, it is a very common practice among many veterans of the game to purposefully overfill the factory so that they can actually, um, you know, build multiple things in it and have some things just sat there ready to go if they need to. I'm going to pick up a bit more carbon here um, just so that we've got it in stock here. This is a very deep, decent sized carbon deposit. We've uh, got 30% left. I think that'll do for now. Uh, that's brought us back up to another 900. I can go back and get some more later. Anyway, back towards the science station. I think we've got, there's an iron down there that would be good to pick up. But maybe we can stop by and pick up the iron on the way home after we talk to the science station. Let's go and have a little chat with Dr. Hendrill. Now, fortunately, the, the hover bike seems to, touch wood, <laughs> seems to have uh, stopped jiggering around like an absolute crazy thing. Um, but, uh, I appreciate you guys in the comments sort of offering suggestions and whatnot. What may be the cause? Honestly, I don't know. Hover bike was raised. It was using space to lift it up. Uh, and all sorts of things. Nothing seemed to stop it from jiggling. But today, that well, seems much better, doesn't it? It's, in, it's weird because, well, what's the difference between today and yesterday? I, I tried restarting the game and everything, but uh, I don't know. Um, anyway, here we are. Commander. Oh, maybe we haven't fixed the jiggling. Uh, my leg's doing that thing again. <laughs> uh, we're just going to have to. Uh, we're just going to have to ignore it. We're just going to have to ignore it. Pretend it's not happening. Everything is fine. Got stuck on there. Anyway, we'll be done with the um, hover bike soon anyway, so... I knew I could rely on a specialist like you. The collected samples will have to wait, though, because in the meantime, there have been some attacks here by larger groups of Ishgal, as if they were intelligent. I'm still waiting for more information about the scouts. Please come back later. Bye! Okay, it's later. Good news! We were able to identify a kind of nest. That's where the attacks are coming from. I think if we smoke that out... We will deter them for a longer time and we can finish our research in peace. Let's go. Let's not waste time. Find and destroy the nest on my way. I'm, I'm guessing the nest is that quarry that we quarry that we found then. Mineral synth lab. Ooh, it ain't that quarry. It, it, it ain't that quarry. Um, okay. So I've still got the five samples on me. Now, that's interesting. <laughs> they didn't take the five samples from you. So we could probably go and sell those, but I'm going to keep hold of them. Um, is there an ATM? I don't think there's an ATM in here, is there? Um, I didn't I don't remember seeing an ATM in here. Maybe there's one in the um, in the habitat lab. Uh, hang on a second. Let me just check through. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why there would be an ATM down here. <laughs> there honestly wouldn't. Um, but, you know, it's always good to double check these things in case you are like me, an unobservant buffoon. And you just miss like a ton of things all the time. Anyway, uh, much to the dismay and horror of many of you in the chat. Banj, you missed that thing. Ah, oh, you looked right past it. Triggered by you not doing this. <laughs> I don't know. It's um, it brings me great amusement. <laughs> Reading your triggered uh, comments, I must say. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I don't think we missed anything. Anyway, there we go. Um. Yeah. No freaking ATM in here either. A galactic currency is the credit. What? Oh, the galactic currency is the credit. I, I, what? <laughs> you spoon. Okay, so I'm not seeing any ATMs anymore. Let's move on. Let's go. Let's kick up some iron. We'll go back. I feel like we should probably go to the synth lab with our SV and not the hover bike here. I feel like uh, twin 15 mil gats are gonna come in real handy real soon, you know? Okay, so that's now processing down into iron ingots there. I think what we can do is uh, we can connect to our taskbar here, grab the iron, cobalt, silicon, neo, and copper. Hit F2. 
And then we can grab straight from our bar here, the copper, uh, the silicon, which we only need 243 of. So I can, uh, again, right click that, drag half the stack in. What you can also do is click the stack and hover it. And then instead of dropping the whole lot in with left click, you right click to add one. And you can just keep right clicking and you'll see it tick up on the right hand. And when it reaches the maximum, it stops doing that. Great if there's only like a few left to, to add in. Not so great if there's like hundreds still to add in. Uh, we're going to need all that cobalt. We're going to need a lot more where that came from. And the iron is only 228. So I'm going to grab half and then half again. And then drag the whole lot of, uh, of that into there. And the neo, we need 10. So I'm going to grab half and then right click to 10. There we go. So, yeah, quite a few nice little ways of, of doing that. Now, if instead of dragging each one back into the box, you can just unconnect and reconnect. It'll automatically deposit what was on the bar back. Oh, I forgot about the titanium, actually. Let's do that because that's only four rods, isn't it? One, two, three, four. There we go. And we can pop that back there. There we go. OK, so we need more copper. Um, we need more cobalt. And that's it. All right. So that's pretty good. So um, while I can, actually, I might see if I can build one more tool that's very useful. Uh, we're going to need to unlock it, though. So let's hit F3 for our tech tree. I'm going to unlock the multi-tool. I'm going unlock to the, unlock the drill as well so that I can actually make drill charges. Um, that is basically the way that with weapons and tools and stuff like that. If you want to make the ammunition or the charge for that, you need to unlock the weapon. Sorry, I didn't cover that last time. There's a lot to go through. <laughs> Inevitably, I'm going to miss things, forget things, or take certain things for granted because I haven't thought of them. So I do appreciate you guys in the comments, the uh, you veterans in the comments that are coming up and saying, oh, by the way, you can also do this, that, and the other. So if you are uh, new to Imperion and still learning with us, then do check the comments of the videos down below because the community of this game is amazing. They're really, really helpful. Everybody is... Um, you know, really happy to help new players and get more players interested in this game. Um, so yeah, do check out the comments below because, um, you know, they don't, well, hmm, some of them, eh, most of them don't bite. <laughs> most of them don't bite. <laughs> but there may be one or two. Yeah, there always, there's always one or two guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just looking at my food situation. I, I found a ration pack in one of the little um, outpost things that are dotted around. So um, I did that. I found that off camera. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm, I'm running out of emergency ration bars because we're scooting around on the motorbike so much now. I'm not stopping to pick up things like the horn dogs and herbal leaves and whatnot. Uh, but we're still picking up occasional bits of meat. Now, there's one other thing that we can do to manage our food. Because <laughs> inevitably, we're going to run out of those ration bars. Uh, those little power bars and stuff. We're going to need a food processor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock that from the base tab there. And then we're going to go and build that here in our small constructor. That's going to go chopping away. There we go. Um, and we're going to put that next to our fridge in a minute. Now, the food processor kind of works a little bit like a constructor does, kind of like this thing. It, it's, it takes power. Um, even when it's left switched on, not doing anything, it takes power. We're going to need to connect it to the fridge as well. Um, so that it has a box to work in and out of. So there we go, there's our food processor. Select that to the fridge in the drop down. It'll automatically set the input, uh, the output to the input. And from here, we can craft a bunch of different food items and medical items and even seeds and stuff. So with the seeds, for example, say we wanted a spice seed, we've got enough uh, spice to actually make a seed, but we need to add water and nutrient solution to the fridge. Okay, well, we're not really in a position to do that just yet. I'm going to try and save the spice so that, um, you know, when when we are in a position to do that, I can actually then make it. But for now, all we're going to do is cook the 13 meat that I've got there into steaks. Um, and we can also cook that one vegetable we got into there into, into a fried vegetables, which gives us 32 food. The uh, vegetable there only gives us 20. So, you know, unless you're saving up for seeds, I suppose it's worth it. Um, so if you're on a hot planet, things like berry juice, fruit juices and stuff like that, just note that they also lower your body temperature by three degrees. So they can be used as a good way to manage uh, overheating as well as they give you 25 health, you know. 
So the fruit juice there gives you 41 health. And the vegetable juice 43 health. So you know, as a as a cheap little healy thing, a healing item, they're quite good as well. If you've got lots of fruit and stuff in in stock. Um, you know, just bear that in mind. Just keep an eye on all the different stats of the different foods and stuff like that because they can be quite good. Oh, well, there we go. Once uh, once I cook, we can shift right click to eat them directly from the fridge. Now, with the grilled steak in particular, again, pay attention to all the stats and stuff that they give you. They raise your body temperature by three degrees. So, if you're on a hot uh, planet, <laughs> chowing down on these is probably not a great idea. Um, unless you've got some way of cooling yourself back down afterwards. But there we go. Uh, we've got some food in the fridge. That will preserve our energy bars a little bit longer for emergency use and our emergency ration also for emergency use. We can go ahead and disconnect from that now. Okay. So, we still need iron and cobalt don't we so let's get back on our bike the nearest iron deposit all the way back down there i wasn't able to actually pick much of it up with my inventory as full as it was the cobalt deposits there are apparently eight on this planet of which i've discovered only three but they all seem to be down here on the sort of southern southern hemisphere there's actually one on the way to the mineral synth lab by the looks of it so we'll run there and get that on the way, probably there or back. Let's go get some iron and stuff though. Me and a complete nugget. It's not iron I need to get, it's comma. <laughs> I got a bunch of iron. <laughs> I need to go get copper. Silly sausage. Okay, there we go. I got some copper in. It's processing now. While it's doing that, I'm going to hit up F3. Go to the MISC tab here. I'm going to un unlock large fuel pack. Large fuel packs give you 150 per power unit something per hour maybe um whereas the fuel max here or oh, yes okay promethean pellets 10 output count 2 they give you 30 per uh but fuel pellets 50 output count 2 for 150 per you know it's no brainer really isn't it the large fuel packs are far more efficient and cost effective so i'm gonna go ahead and line up oh Damn it. I can't line them up in the small constructor because unfortunately, as uh, Tech Tree was trying to warn me there, you can only create the large packs in a large constructor or an advanced constructor. Down the bottom here, you see these little colored squares? These are the different constructors. Every uh, thing you unlock has got the little squares in the icon donating what constructor can actually make that item. So by unlocking few large fuel packs, all I've done is just basically <laughs> end point. Uh, but I can't actually make them. Uh, what we could do, possibly if we've got the resources here, go over to the base tab and find the large constructor. There it is. So we can unlock it because it's only level five. Unlock that, which can be made in the small constructor here. And let's see if we can actually build it. This is basically the next tier of constructing the next tier of constructibles i suppose we could say the uh large constructor now we're just gonna have to find somewhere to put it but well, we do have a multi-tool now so we have options now the window there i think is is possibly on the outside but with the multi-tool selected you've got retrieve not just salvage the salvage is what the salvage tools has the uh, survival tool suit uh, sorry uh, we've got retrieve so we can actually take whole blocks out now now you might want to actually connect to a large box before doing that so i'm going to go ahead and connect to this put my uh, windows back put the large constructor that we just built on there press t to cycle between your connected toolbar and your main toolbar i'm going to go ahead and remove this bench as well and then press t again and i'm going to rotate the window so that it is actually in the block space outside the base, so not there. If I put the window there, I cannot put anything else in that highlighted block. So I'll put it on the outside like that. I'm going to right click and select a slightly bigger one and put that on the outside as well. And that means that that space there next to the ammo box, I can now use for my constructor. I'm going to get a little cramped in here, but there you have a large constructor and you know, it's large, as the name suggests. 
works just like the small one. We'll select a cargo box there um, so that we know what we can build and stuff. And now we can build the large fuel packs. I've been picking up Promethean, little bits of Promethean from um, the golems that we found. So we should have the resources here to build a bunch of fuel packs. So let's go ahead and line up 10. It's going to eat through the Promethean that we've got there. And we've got 10 small fuel packs in there as well. Uh, as well. Okay, so while that's doing that, we'll go ahead and connect and put the copper that I've made onto my toolbar. Hit F2 and I don't want to go over too much because copper is... There we go, that's pretty good. Um, so we've filled that up. All the all the numbers are now green, saying that we have enough resources for the Mark, uh, Mark V Nightshade there. Start production. And that's going to go instantly because of the settings that I set at the beginning of the game. And there we go. Let's connect from that. We now have a Nightshade in our factory ready to spawn in. Okay. Now, as I said at the beginning of the series, all vessels that I use during this series, I'll put a link down below so that uh, you guys can go and sub to the same boats if you want to. Nightshade's been on my workshop for a while, mine, so it's nothing new. And none of the builds that I'm going to showcase during this series are going to be anything new. They are going to be old or reasonably fresh-ish, not very new builds of mine. And here we go. We just select spawn. Make sure that we're in a clear open space where there's plenty of room. And the group box turns green. Click and place the vessel. And voila. We have our nightshade. We have our vessel. Um, there's quite a lot, I think, to this one. But it doesn't have a shield. There is a space for one right there. Um, let's get the drone out because I keep falling off this. So I put a hatch in the top here for CPU extender. Um, zzz, and a shield. Basically, the shield can go in that space there. Um, but if we look at the ship, press P to access its control panel, we can see um, A, all of its statistics on the stats page. So we can see the flight statistics here are a bit nuts. It has 103 degrees a second roll. <laughs> It has a 27 degrees a second pitch and 86 degrees a second yaw. It is over thrusted. It is over thrusted. Intentionally so, uh, so you can fill its boxes up, you can upgrade it and uh, put more weight on it and stuff like that. There's plenty of spaces on this thing that you can add more weapons uh, and stuff like that. So it can definitely see you through uh, a little ways of the game here. We can see those nice jet thrusters on the back, giving it plenty of uh, forward power as well. And the twin gats at the front here, which is enough for it to deal with drones. And that's about it, really. But still, it's uh, very, very handy if you're just dealing with some local wildlife. And you just need to gun things down as well. So there we go. Um, now, if we go back into e, the control panel here and click on CPU statistics. CPU statistics is what tells us uh, how, how much stuff we can still add to it. Uh, now you can upgrade the CPU up to four tiers and it's all sort of explained in this picture over here. You've got the core, which is tier zero. You've got the first CPU extender, which is tier one. Have I got this right? No, the core is tier one. Sorry. The first CPU extender is tier two, then three, then four. Now in the nightshade at the moment, as is indicated here, we're at tier two and it's indicated down here as well. We have 15,000 of available CPU points of, to spend on this ship. Currently allocated is 12,220. Because we're under the 15,000, our ship is 100% efficient. Very nice. That does mean that we can add some stuff to it. We can add another 2,760, uh, sorry, 80 um, CPU points to this ship and still be within that 100% threshold. All right. F3 small vessel we want to add a shield to this thing really and ideally you want to add a shield to all of your vessels where at all possible this thing will save your bacon it will mean that any shots fired won't just like instantly detonate your ship if you get hit by say a homing missile or something like that the shield will absorb it You'll notice it because, you know, you'll see a big flash and your shield and strength will go down. And that's your cue to get the 
hell out of whatever trouble you've just found yourself into. Um, the polar polarized hull shield here is what's available to us. It has a CPU cost of 16,300. Hmm. That could be troublesome, couldn't it? I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. Just because that is the first upgrade that I want to do to this vessel. However, we just figured out that we only have, you know, 2,000 CPU available. So we're definitely going to... Anybody? We're definitely going to need to um, add some CPU extenders. This little guy just wants to play. He do. He just wants to play. Hey, Mama. Yeah. Ah, he's a good little dinosaur. I'm going to call you Jimmy. You look like a Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. How's it going, Mummy? <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of coding in the AI here. The, uh, the babies will want to play. They'll sort of run around you and stuff like that until Mama wanders off and then, then they'll follow Mama. It's really cute. <laughs> it's a really cute little addition. I don't really cover it very much. Uh, it, since they added it, I sort of did it once and then was like, oh, that's cute. But uh, I do enjoy when they come up and like, hey, run around you and stuff. It's cool. Um, I've completely and utterly lost track of what I was talking about. Right. Yeah, sorry, CPU. <laughs> uh, back in F3, then, we can see the CPU extender T3 is what we're going to need. Uh, in order to add a shield to the nightshade there, we're going to need this pupper. Level 12. We're not level 12 yet, so we can't unlock it. Uh, but we can have a little sneak peek at the cost of this thing. And uh, that is under the crafting bit of information you see there. Notice how it costs two small optronic bridge judges. Um, a plus flux coils, optical core, and stuff like that. I don't know if you remember or not, but when I picked up a flux coil, I was like, that's nice. Because they are. Um, so, yeah, the bridge judges. I don't even think I can make them in the large constructor. I think they're something that can only be made in an advanced as well. But the point is, they're pretty freaking advanced. And generally speaking, early game, the only way you're going to get them is from loot or quest rewards. Okay, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Right, what we are going to need to do is make some 15 mil bullets. So we're going to head and build some of these guys because we're going to need them. Uh, I don't think 30 is necessary. 20 because they build in batches of 100, okay? You know, you go through a lot of them though, so yeah. Um, wait for those to build up. In the meantime, we can put the whopping four fuel cells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Four fuel cells. We'll uh, go into the P menu. Sorry, I went a bit quick there. So you go into the P menu. You've got fuel, oxygen, fuel, and pentax are down here. Click manage under fuel. It opens up a bit like your inventory. You can then use the logistics system here to change the drop down to your base and the cargo box. Drag the fuel from your cargo box straight into the fuel tank. And there we go. I'm going to pinch five of the small ones as well just to top us up. Uh, but yeah, we're going to need we're going to need some more fuel, guys. Let's see what our small constructor, a portable, has done. Oh, nice. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and connect to this big box here so that we have drag that 100 biofuel into it. We can then go back to our ship and we can add half of that. Brilliant. Fills it up. There we go. We did the rest on biofuel. Everything's fine. <laughs> Interestingly, if you now extract this fuel from the withdrawal function, it'll all withdraw as small fuel packs. So, yeah. <laughs> There, remember that as well, because that's quite handy to get around some things later on. Okay, there we go. Our ship is fueled. Now it just needs some ammo. So in the middle drop down here, we can select our ammo controller. And we can move over some of the 15 mil bullets that we've made so far. More are being made though, right? Right? Hmm. There we go. Yeah, some more are still being made. So we'll wait until that's done. Um, if you're on a non-breathable planet, You'll want to add whatever oxygen tanks you've acquired so far. No, you have none, so I won't be adding any. And if you're going warpy warps, you'll want to add the pentaxid fuel in here. Again, we don't have any yet. That will come. All right, so I'm just going to top up a little bit more ammunition in here. I'm going to turn this guy off because he generates a lot of power. There's a little switch up here. Yeah, it consumes a lot of power rather than generates it, I'm sorry. And I think we're ready to go. Now this thing is going to be a lot uh, more convenient for mining as well because our personal inventory is 600 in the volume down here. The ship's inventory is 800. 
and it has two of them. Not huge, I would admit. Definitely ships out there with much more storage than the Nightshade here. But what I like about the Nightshade, A, it's ridiculously overthrusted, B, it's warp capable, and C, I cram all of that capability into this teeny tiny little ship. It's just, I don't even know how I did it, but <laughs> it's, it's so small. <laughs> It's so ditty bitty. Um, yeah, I don't really know how I managed that, but there we go. Oh, there we go. We've got 900 rounds now sitting there waiting for. You can access your ship remotely using F4. You know, I don't need to be next to it or do anything. I can hit F4. The Nightshade has got a Wi Fi uh, block on it, so I can just click over the ammunition directly. So there's about 2,000 rounds there, which is lovely. One final thing I'm going to do before I leave base here is. Create a wireless connection block. That's what we unlocked from the MISC tab last episode. It's down here. And I'm going to add it to the base because uh, the base doesn't actually have one. Now that we've got a vessel, it's going to be useful for it to have one so that we can access the base from within the ship. Everything you want to access over the Wi Fi has to have a Wi Fi block. Right. Now we're getting a little bit heavy on the drop downs. We've got multiple things, and there's our Wi-Fi. I'm going to lap that up there. There we go. Bingo. I think we're good to go. All right. Just double check what's on me. Got plenty of shotgun shells. Yep. All right, let's take it for a spin. Now I'm going to show you the absolute ludicrous speed and maneuverability and power of this absolutely ridiculous ship that just is almost impossible to fly. So you might be like, well, Spanish, why the hell are you, did you choose that if it's so twitchy and, and uh, just insane? Well, you can actually calm it down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Control W while it's at full speed. This locks the cruise control on. The speed will now be at 100%. Uh, I'm going to hit O to level her out so she's flat and level. Now, now I can do other things. I'm going to go into the control panel again for this ship, which you can do from the cockpit. Go to statistics, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the pitch down. I'm going to slide the pitch down to about 70 or so degrees a second. I'm going to do, the, I'm going to keep the roll up to 101 to be honest, because that's useful. I'm going to do the same to the yaw, down to about 70 or so. There we go. Now, as we increase weight of the ship, we can increase those stats back up. Um, but for now, that will make the ship a hell of a lot more controllable. And as you can see, it's already much smoother. Silky smooth now. Right. This seems to be an extremely old technical facility. What would creatures like Hish uh, Hishkal want here? Is a very good question. And see, now that I've created that, uh, uh, sort of, you know, tinkered with the controls of this thing and refined them to my liking, uh, I can I can fly it. <laughs> much 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 better there is however a couple of little outbuildings out here that the destroyed towers I don't care about but this one I know that there is a box in here that is that is has been fortunate for me so far and it is fortunate for me again in furnishing with night vision goggles <laughs> thank you <laughs> hey I'm being shot hey okay and this is where our twin gats come in a cheeky little drone decided to take a pot shot at us. Get above it this time. Yeah. When you're above it, it can't shoot you. I've lost a block already, guys. This is the problem with not having shields. One sh errant shot from a pesky drone. And I've already dented the freaking bodywork on my sh brand new ship. Unbelievable. Now, don't worry. It's not hard to replace, it's just annoying. Now, what if you take a crap load of damage to your ship? Do you have to, you know, repair it yourself and manually? No, no you don't. Stupid arachnid. Um, there are repair bays in game, and there is also something called station services that can repair your ship. When you spawn a vessel in, like I have done there, what you get is a template is automatically saved. However, if you then make modifications to your ship, you need to click this save template button in order to update it with the modifications you've made. Otherwise, when you then go to repair it, it will repair it without the modifications. 
I'm going to go ahead and turn the ship off here using the Y key. Do that from within your ship, not from without. Otherwise, you'll end up turning your base off. A lesson I've learned over time <laughs> and still occasionally fail to do. Um, you can turn the ship off or leave it rather leave the ship on so that the fridge is powered up. Uh, and then if you go into the control panel and turn thrusters off, it's the main drawer of uh, main drawer of power. So your fridge will continue to run and keep things cool, but the main power drawer of the thrusters out is not going to drain the fuel tanks. It's just it's going to run out of fuel slower, basically. Okay. Ice golems and arachnid thingies. Ah, I took a hit there. Freaking arachnid has a reach. All right. Yeah, this place seems to be somewhat overrun, huh? Again, don't forget you can access your ship remotely using F4. So if you're gathering a lot of materials that are heavy, weighing you down, F4, whip them back into your ship, carry on. Did take a hit there, so I'm going to use a bandage just to top my health back up. All right. We got to investigate this area. Use a use my jetpack to get out of trouble a lot of the times, especially when I'm backed up against the wall like that. Get to get above the enemy. Sometimes they can't hit you. Shotgun seems to have a very very wide spray mechanic. Hi. Uh, oh, hello. I didn't mean to find this, I'll be honest. This is an accident. But, again, we can just loot straight into the nightshade there. Couple of boxes here. Upper floor. Well, we made it inside. More few boxes to loot. A hole in the floor. Oh my god. What the hell are they? Hang on. Drone. <laughs> oh my god, there's raptors with glowing red eyes. That's not terrifying at all. They're so ditty. They're such little, little raptors. Yeah, a little bit, no doubt. Very deadly. There's a nice loot container. Assault rifle and sniper rifle. 15 fuel packs, anti-radiation pills, magnesium, and 120 iron ingots. Not bad at all for this stage of the game. Alright, I'm assuming we do need to go down there. I mean, I am fam somewhat familiar with this base. It has been used before. Um, but, I, I, yeah, they've obviously reconfigured it here. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to be running into. All right, hang on. Let me go up this one more. The lovely room here. The meds. Always welcome. Some gold. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. And some milk and sausage. That classic combination. I don't know what flipping these switches is going to do. Often I flip these switches and something explodes, you know. <laughs> um, let's go back out a second. There was a flipper here. Flipper. Okay, so that's open these doors. All right, good. Let's check the other side now. All right, so far so quiet. Oh, that's the fridge. So lots of little bits and bobs and crafting stuff so far, that's all really. Um, we can go up. The bed, ours, and that's the other side of the rubble that we found. Ooh, a locker. Okay. There was another little sneaky door I noticed as we flew past this one. Hmm, not allowed. Okay, can't go through there. 
I think this is where the raptors are gathering. I guess that leaves us with one option. Well, actually two. There's 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 up as well. My god. I see it. I see it. There's a drone attacking my ship. You son of a bitch. Look at the damage it's done. It's nearly caught it. Oh my god. You son of a mother ducking bastardy drone git face. I want to say really bad words. You I really want to say bad words. You. Uh, oh, I just got this thing. How long was it there shooting it for? I didn't even freaking notice until something exploded. Ah, uh, really got to keep an eye on that mini map, man. Watch for those freaking red dots. Oh, it ate, it ate my ship. It ate it. I think it still works, though. It's got everything, I believe. It might have lost fuel tank, maybe. Yeah, multi-tool's got a repair function as well, guys. Hang on. <sighs> it still works. It's got a giant hole in it, but it still works. All right, I'm going to park it here. <laughs> <laughs> just in case more sneaky arsing drones turn up and I don't notice them uh, uh. well that's just great that's just great this is why you want shields you really really want shields uh, right anyway Let's uh, move on. If you can hide your ship, protect it in some way, that's why. <laughs> that's why you do. Hello, fella. Good reload. Jetpack is key to dodging here. Oof. All right. Okay, well, at least we didn't lose the uh, storage here as well. That's good. Some good news. <laughs> God. <laughs> Not the best of tutorial plays, is it? <laughs> hey, guys, this is how you play this game. Yeah, don't do what I do, right? What is that? Uh, we kill, you're picking up a bunch of Pentax in here. We're going to need this um, for traveling around the solar system. So... Go ahead and pick these little guys up. And oh, eat a dino stew royale while you're there. Fantastic. Best food in the game. Bingo. Right, there's another drone coming in. Look, I've spotted it this time. He just seems to be coming in at this location. Oh, that son of a absolute hamster. Son of a hamster. Hello, fella. Are you a talky talky one? Or are you a hostile, hostile one? Hold your fire. Look over there. The Hishkal is waving at you. He seems to want to talk. I shan't talk. Me, all, ah, we not threat. Knowledge PDA device. Take, read, understand. Hishkal. Danger. Big stones glow. Not visible. Old. Threat comes. Protect biological. Take the PDA. The Hishkal seems uh, seem to be the original inhabitants of the moon. Overall, our research shows this species, which is very power, uh, peaceful towards us, completely contradicts any theory of evolution. Their exoskeleton emits an energy field similar to that of progenitor artifacts. We haven't had a chance to analyze this in more detail yet, but I had a chance to talk to one of their elders, which is probably too much to say. We exchange information in a roundabout way. He promised to protect us. What does he mean by that? I'll take him to my main camp. I have the necessary equipment there. This raises some questions. I think we should start questioning the Polaris excessive interest in these Hishkal creatures. This all doesn't feel right. Hmm. I mean, the other elders told us, yeah, feel free to kill our dudes. They, they suck. Uh, okay, so another Tales of the Tashel Talan lady. Um, 
go ahead and, and read that if you want to. Uh, but there we go. Okay. There's PD on the floor. Dr. Onka Hyal. They seem the original overall research shows the species. Oh, okay, that's that's what I've already read. Armor locker. Uh some alien thorn. Okay. And a drone. Hello, Mr. Drone. Hello, Mr. Drone. You're a little high. I can't quite get to you. Seems to be a spider on the roof as well. Yeah, I need you, Mr. Drone, to come here. Ah, come to me. Oh. You little devil. Come closer. I won't hurt. I won't attack you or anything. Come closer. Come on. Ah, what? Bitch. No reasoning with these things, is there? Brilliant. Hitbox. I don't think I'm in range. I had a sniper rifle, I'd be in range. I don't think I'm in range. Coming closer. He's coming closer. He's coming closer. Come on, just fly right over the top. Guad, 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 guad. Don't go higher. Alright. Maybe we can get him. Oh, where the hell's my jetpack? What the hell? Where the hell's my jetpack? How did it only jump me that much? Fine. I have to go repair my ship now. Son of a drone. Son of a... Look at that! Look at that! You can see the damn core! Unbelievable! He blew up a jet engine. Ah, oh, man. I need someone to do station services so I can repair it. But, um... Because I don't, I don't think I can get... Uh, a T2 repair bay to repair this, right? The base... Uh, repair, repair, repair. Yeah, T2 repair bays all the way up at level 20. Um, and that repairs templates. Whereas the T1... Yeah. Just does damage blocks. <laughs> Which is garbage. It should be the other way around. It might have been, but there we go. Um, so the only way I can repair this without like manually replacing every block is station services, right? I don't think the old science station over there has station services. Certainly it's never told us when we got near it. Um... There might be a space station in orbit somewhere where I can get it repaired. Or I do it the old fashioned way. But it's been so long since I built this thing, I can't actually remember how it's built. All the blocks that have been destroyed. Other than, of course, the. Um, I know the jet thrust has been destroyed. My god. So much damage. So much damage. There was something... Where those two blocks are, there's something there. Possibly a fuel tank. It was probably a fuel tank. Ah! Alright. Fortunately, I have a large constructor. So, I think I have the resources to do this. We can build the jet thruster, and we can build... The fuel tank, where is it? There it is. And um, we can build, I don't know, 20 or whatever it was, steel blocks that are lost. All right, so once again, we connect to our box. We've got the fuel tank, the jet thruster, and the steel blocks that I missed. Key to cycle between those, first of all. Fuel, I'm annoyed that we lost a fuel tank. That is, that is a significant, like, you know, investment, right? Fuel and whatnot. I just want to double check something. Yeah, it is a fuel tank under there. Okay, I'm assuming that the damn thing is symmetrical. Because, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, I built a symmetry mode switched on. 
The jet thruster turns that way round, and I believe that way up as well. Yeah, we're going to go with it. All right. Now, there's a very useful feature. I think I spoke to it about it before when we were adding to the base. Point out a block that you want to copy. Control, or right click. And then you can rotate that block and put it back to where it was. I can do the same on this side as well. I can copy these blocks here and place them in place. I'm going to use the drone here because uh, I'm jumping around like an absolute maniac. Again, draw right click, copy the block. I can do that on the way back here and I can do that with all these blocks as well. I'll need to rotate this one. Oops. But by copying these blocks from the other ones, I'm getting the textures come over as well. So, it actually isn't too bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still terrible, but uh, I think we've repaired it. Just one more after this one. A little nose cone. Bingo. It's like nothing ever happened. So yes, taking damage is a pain in the bum, but it's not the end of the world and it can be fixed. There we go. Back to normal. <laughs> Except I've got a slight color dis uh, mismatch between the two engines. I'm going to keep it though as a reminder to not lose track of that minimap. Now, um, this the nightshade here doesn't have a turret on the top. If it did, the turret could have kept my ship safe. So you can get small starting vessels a bit like this that do have turrets on the top that will shoot that enemy drone out of the sky before it can do too much damage to it. A shield, um, I may have saved the ship. I may not have even noticed it was taking damage while the shield was taking the damage until, again, it exploded. So the turret, definitely a good option on a star vessel. And now you know why. There we go. Okay. So we've got to take this strain to the lab back to the station to be you know to progress the next mission and stuff but unfortunately we've run out of time for today to do that we've done actually quite a lot today um but yeah getting this sv in this is a big step up for us getting a large constructor in as well is also a big step up half getting destroyed by a drone now oh, that's the low point but uh you can't have the wins without the losses sometimes Anyway, either case, uh, I do hope that you found this video useful and that you've enjoyed. And thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you for the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.